Good afternoon guys, it's January the 31st, the last day of the month, uh, and it's Sunday, so I'm just going to quickly go through uh, my monthly charts to just kind of explain to you uh, how I look through my monthlies. Just before I get going though, I'd just like to say that, obviously I do my videos every morning, but I'd like to open this Sunday session up to everyone who watches my videos, uh, and if there's anything that you'd like me to go through, any technique, um, any potential trade setups, anything like that, then I think th Sundays are probably the best time, so just buzz them in, uh, leave a comment. As always, uh, very much appreciated, and, and I can go through that uh, next Sunday when I'll do my next video. So yeah, feel free just to comment and click subscribe, obviously, to never miss a, an update again. So euro dollar, let's start with that one, <clears throat> as we usually do. So on the monthly, we've had a kind of bounce, as we, we've probably expected, and as you've probably seen this month. Draghi's big um, big decision now is going to be at the March March um, March meeting. So again, we're just looking to, for good areas to sell this, and I think this month has been has kind of summed up how we how we've gone a very much an indecision monthly bar, uh, which obviously we look like we're going to close on. So so yeah, indecision bar. We have bounced off this bottom to this 105.68 uh, kind of area, which last month we, we did go down and test those lows, and we've rallied since again. So so yeah, it just looks like we are holding on this eight to so this the top side this 109. Uh, 109.90 area is kind of the top side for that one. Um, again, this pullback to the 23.6 is the only is the deepest one so far. So, I mean, in technical technical terms, this euro dollar monthly chart should pull back to the should pull back to 123.50. But in my in my actual view, I think we kind of will turn over and go lower. Do I think the eurozone sorted out? Uh, potentially not. Uh, and therefore, you've got to expect this to kind of run on. And one of the trades, obviously, is a 23.6 pullback, and then we run on to the 118, which is down at 96. Obviously, that's going to be uh, a long time long time coming and we're kind of trying to predict now for the for the monthly charts this is a, a big old time frame we're looking at but technically terms you know in technical terms excuse me sorry uh, through 104 uh, through 10450 we are then going lower so yeah down to sort of you've got to play the support and resistance obviously on the way down 10330 and then 99 so so yeah I, th I think it, I think it looks like it could roll over obviously through 112 I think that's key through 112 I then I'll I then do expect these uh, big monthly levels to be taken on sort of 117 119 and then the 38s back up at 123 uh, and that's also a good level of resistance so we could see a rally into that the 38 exactly let me tell you is 122.40 so if we do get a rally into that that's a that's um, a big old rally in your dollar and in ter in the monthly terms uh, it's a big big distance away so Obviously, this kind of formation, we've kind of been sideways in Euro for the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, it's so a sort of nearly a year now we've been sideways. We've kind of just been between this 112 and 105. So, when this breaks out, I would expect this to be a significant runaway market as it has been before. So, so again, there's nothing in, in the monthly chart that's telling me that this is going to go one direction or the other. We have bounced, we have shown indecision, and I just think that this could now make a lower high on this 8 and we roll over. So, that's my view for Euro dollar. So, cable. So cable's a good one, um, an interesting one as well. So for me, this, this is what I'm going to talk you through. So we have had a very, very bearish month, but this is a big level down here. This 140 level is big for cable. You see how you expect there to be at least a month's reaction here. I don't expect it to blast straight through. Certainly, I wouldn't expect to close straight through this. So I think that we have to make another lower high, and I think that kind of agrees with my daily thought and my weekly thought that we have a bit of a pullback in cable at the moment. So... This is the 118 in terms of if we do if we just fib this small move down, we are at the 118, which is perfect. So that kind of is the first fail zone. So then we get maybe a pullback. We go and test these highs again, um, the 147.60. So we get that pullback into that zone, and then maybe we, we roll over. So maybe we get an indecision candle this month, uh, or maybe we get a bit of a bounce and we, we try and test that 147.60 area. Um, I think that that probably is, is quite a good idea for that one, and also that would let the 8 catch up as well. But certainly, this is a big level. So just have a look at this, guys, if you've not before. This is a big old level in cable, and you do expect there to be a reaction. So we, obviously, we might spike lower, but I think we close back above. And, and I think 140 is a big old level for cable, certainly on the month. You see how big it is here. Um, but then, obviously, through that, we then, we then do look lower. And this does look like a quick market, so we could potentially get that pull out. In terms of the big fib, we are back at the 50, so we are targeting the D. Um, and actually, nicely, this 1618 would probably line quite nicely up. If, if it spiked lower uh, into sort of the 126, 127 uh, area. And obviously this D here is the 128.40. So, so yeah, I mean, that's a longer term target for cable if, if, the, if these fibs are correct. Um, but certainly it does look lower should should we go through these lows. Uh, and obviously it's, it's on the UK now to, to be hiking rates. So in the next 12 months, we could see this significantly lower if the UK continually delays when it's going to hike its interest rates. Uh, and this could then, then be falling uh, a lot lower and we could potentially see what was it down here so 107 uh, and that was in 
what, in 85. So obviously we are a long way back. But certainly this is the weakest the pound has been against the dollar in a long, long time. In a, well, in a long, long time. So, so again, just be wary of these levels. Obviously, in terms of is it a big level? Yes. So just uh, that's why I'm skeptical down here. I think cable's probably a good buy. This is in, certainly in its buy zone. This is a big old level. So, so a good one for cable. Uh, interesting market for that one. Right, dollar yen. Let's go into that one. Obviously, that's had a nice close recently. So I've just highlighted this area. Quite an interesting one. So, if we just put the fib in, let's have that one in as well. So in terms of the fib, right, we have pulled back to 23.6 and we've kind of failed at this 118. But for me, these low spikes are pretty similar. This zone that we're in at the moment is pretty similar to this zone. Uh, and this low test is then followed by a nice up, upwards candle, right? So a nice bullish candle. So this has had a low test of this bottom bottom side. It's actually tested the 21 moving average to the pip, basically. We have since held and rallied. Uh, and I think this... This could be a quite an easy buy next month. Maybe we go 123, I think through 123, 125, and then up and out through that. The fail first fail zones one, well 126.90 and then 129.50, uh, and then the D's a lot lot higher up at 139.30. So, so what I'd expect, obviously, is with what happened last week with um, Kuroda opening the taps once more for um, for Japanese easing. Um, I think that this could rally even further. I think we go and at least go and test those highs sometime this month. Uh, 123 I think maybe even in the next week you go and test 123 and through that then 125 127 uh, and then up uh, and up and away so we are right at the bottom actually of the you know in terms of the grand scheme of things we are low down in, in, in this dolly yen I mean people don't often give it enough credit but we are we are very low on this uh, this chart and obviously you know that when this market moves it moves really nicely so when you get the breakout of this so if we do clear this we are you can expect that to trend quite nicely and trend nice quite nicely up excuse me um, and so yeah that's what I'll be looking for for this in terms of the, the bigger time frame this one looks like it wants to run on uh, and I think a 125 126 enter this month uh, isn't isn't going to be isn't going to be too too difficult obviously the 38 pullback is at 111 but something's going to have to significantly change for it to get there um, within the coming months maybe by the end of the year um, but yeah I think that this is I think you can target up to one sort of 127 128 I think there should be some good trading uh, opportunities in, in dolly yen for the coming month certainly so I think we rally next month is my is my opinion in dolly yen so just a quick flip back so maybe we, we see a bit of still indecision in euro dollar it's just going to range between those two zones cable we've said maybe has a bit of a pullback in it and so far dolly yen we're saying we think that rallies too so um, they're my three at the moment so just go back to this one so dollar yen, we're just going to go now to dollar cad. So dollar cad, nice. It's hit the D on the monthly. Really interesting market. So we have hit the D perfectly, and we have spiked into this. Now, normally I'd say, right, well, now I expect this to come off. But for me, what it seems to have done in the past is when it's hit the D on the top side, it's kind of, we have gone back up there and tested it again. Now, obviously, we haven't closed up there, but it has gone and tested it. So I do expect this to pull back. Obviously, it's so dependent on oil. And at the moment, if I just have a quick look at that, we're up at 34.40. So as one of the traders here kind of pointed out, it trades in $5 handles. So you get 130 and then 135 was hit quite easily. So up through 135, then I would expect oil to go and have a go at 130, 130 well, sorry, 40. But also, on interestingly, on oil, you can't see my chart at the moment, guys. Something we might go through as well. It's trading so nicely on the Fibonacci sequences. We are ball back to the 38. So I think early next week, you could easily hit 36 uh, currently in the way it's going. Obviously, I need to do a bit of high time frame analysis on that. But in the 60 minute chart so far, we could get back up to 136. Uh, and then through that, we're up to yeah up to the 38. So quite an interesting one. I do expect to go and test those highs again. Uh, and dollar CAD obviously would not that it wouldn't do that it should oil continue to rally so that we could come off absolutely so the key levels for this one 141 and 137.50 on the month I think that's quite a good rejection but as I've showed you here we do go up during the month to go and test it so just be wary of playing the uh, playing the short side in that one yet the D the 38 pullbacks down at 136 so just have a look whether that lines up with a uh, with any of your daily levels and I think that could be quite a nice one as well so so yeah, my, my view is that dollar cad, I think you get some aggressive moves upwards. I don't think you go through 146.80. I think it might have another go. The re rejection was very harsh, uh, and I think obviously it normally will go and have another go, uh, as it's done here, and you end up with just quite a choppy market. So just wait and see what happens in dollar cad. Uh, I'm going to continually play the short side. I think this 130, 139, 140 area is quite key. So I think through there, you then take on the 138s, 137 zone. Um, but if we pop up through back through 141, then I will be looking to buy this. Obviously, just playing between support and resistance on my smaller time frames but certainly we are at the D uh, in this so you can expect to pull back uh, and it was a little bit overextended so just be careful of dollar cad I think it's a good one it's double bottom if we put the uh, MPO in just terms of if we just kind of rep oh, 
replicate that we're back up to 160 which is a good level so we could see this get here obviously uh, we could see this continually trend up and to do that we are going to have to take out these highs um, but obviously I don't think it's going to do that this month but yeah the good yeah it's not the best close in terms of bear, in a bullish close but we have rejected from the highs and quite a bearish close so yeah I think that this could be a good one um, either way really you get the setups either way follow your support and resistance on the smaller time frames and then we can look for this in in both directions Okay, Aussie. Aussie I, Aussie, I like just to turn over again. Um, every time it does it, it kind of nicely moves away. We, although we have rejected off, off quite, you know, quite significantly off, off this uh, this low down here, one what, 68, 50 area. I think we do probably go and have another crack at it. I think next month we just open, we just carry on. Uh, it does look like it wants to go a little bit lower. However, this rejection has come off, uh, no pullback to the 38. So if we don't and we take this high out, so if, I'm going to say if, if we kind of take out 73, I think this is the one then trades higher and it trades higher quite quickly. I think you get 76 and 79 hit quite quickly. The 38's up at quite a good level of resistance up there, actually. I'm going to put that one in and that's up at 83. So a lot of people, I've had a lot of people saying perfect time to buy Aussie. Um, yeah, I mean, if it's bottoming out, then yes, it is. But that key level, that 69.80 level is key. So let's see what happens in that zone. Uh, and if we get back down there, let's see what happens. But certainly, good rejection off this. And it could be a fast market. It's holding nicely on this ATMA. So let's just see. Next month could be a bit of an indecision bar. Set the tone and then we see this rally. Um, so yeah, from a, from a higher time frame kind of analysis, uh, we are obviously are looking to play these fibs. The 21 is now across the 200 and the 200 looks like it's now going to approach the 50 as well. So we could see this sell off. Um, I think this was the market that... Yeah, so we've, we've never crossed... Um, the 50 has never crossed through. The 50 has never crossed through the 200 on the downside. This will be the first time it's done it. So, obviously, when this does happen, you're going to have a reaction. A lot of people will be watching that, and you could then get this roll over. But I think for the time being, it looks like for me like it's going to roll over. That was just a low test, uh, and we could see um, Aussie str a bit of Aussie weakness. However, if we do go through those highs, if we do go through um, that level that I was talking about earlier, I think it was 70. 73 yeah up through 70 to 73 it takes on 76 79 and then up towards 84 yeah is a, is a level that i like on that one as well so yeah aussie aussie looks good as well um interesting markets i'm really looking forward to trading these um let's have a look at this one so the kiwi the kiwi the kiwi is an interesting one so i've just put this uh, inner trend line in so let's have a look at that one <clears throat> so the inner trend line we are back at the 38 so this one has completed that that sequence so in terms of when we're trying to build it together the kiwi looks weaker than the aussie uh, and i think this one could roll over quite quickly and when it does you see this roll and then it goes so last time it did this perfect perfect sequence here pull back to the 38 had that good bullish bar and then it was bang slap back down and then exactly the same has happened and it took the lows out so this one i think you can expect to kind of take on those lows and i think you can trade it quite easily down to 62 62 40 60 and then 58 i think you go a lot a lot lower than this i do expect expect this inner trend line to break I think this one in the inside is a more prominent one as you can see that's the proper move I think uh, and I think then that goes and takes on the low so if you make this obviously that's not in yet because it's not made a new low so we are going to go and approach this one and I think that a 118 sort of down at 58 is probably quite a good zone um, in, in that one as well so so yeah I mean it's going to be really interesting uh, we've had a really good month in terms of January I think to sum it up we've kind of had uh, Obviously, the yen rallied in the first weeks, and now it's sold back off again because of what you know, what Kuroda Abe and what Kuroda and Abe have said. Um, the pound's been weak, sold off obviously down into those 140 zones. We've had a nice move up in dollar CAD, and it's now since held. Oil's come off significantly and has bounced a little bit. Um, Aussie and Kiwi have, have both off a little bit for the month. Uh, and what else have I got? Euro's just gone sideways. So, so it's been an interesting month. I'd say that the first couple of weeks were great, um, and then a bit, a bit sideways. And you know, last week was a bit sideways as well, not so clear. Uh, but really, try and find those markets that are trending and, and use those uh, trending strategies to full effect, because then I think you you get excess return. So as I said, thanks. For re I really do appreciate you watching my videos. I hope you enjoy them. Um, and yeah, feel free to comment. Click to subscribe. The head trader here, Andy Demi, has got a webinar on Tuesday, so that'll be really, you know, really useful. The link will be in my video tomorrow. I haven't got the link right now, but it'll be in my morning video tomorrow. So please follow that link and listen to him. Uh, he's trade. He's going to go through a live trading setup, so it'd be really interesting to listen to. Um, I hope that's been useful. Uh, and as I said, comment anything you can, uh, anything you want me to run through, and I'll be happy to do so. So happy trading for the coming month. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning, uh, where I'll go through everything that I'm looking at on a much smaller time frame for the day. So happy trading, and I hope that's been useful. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs>